So I think this might be all we have, but that is fine. Four is plenty for a club. Yeah. It's about the right size, really, because it's small enough that we'll actually probably talk to each other. So that's useful. Um, all right, so this is the first session for the Introduction to Probability for Data Science book club. Uh, I'm John Harmon. I uh, run R4DS and I will be facilitating, facilitating this cohort. Um, if you haven't read the book yet, uh, it's available for free online. We have the link. Oh, I guess the first thing is these notes are at uh, rfds.io slash prob4ds. Uh, you can click through to the GitHub, and I'll talk about that a little bit, it, to like contribute to the notes. They're built using um, Bookdown, and that might change in the middle of this club because I want to update everything to Quarto, but it's going to be an effort. So until then, it'll still be in this Bookdown format. Um, and yeah, we uh, you should have seen as you came in, or at least occasionally you'll see that we have a code of conduct. Conduct basically, um, you know, don't be a jerk is the, what it sum, uh, sums up as. Um, and if you have any problems with that, um, talk to me on the Slack. There we go. All right. So if you haven't done one of these clubs before, um, the general idea is each week one of us will present. Uh, a chapter or I think part of a chapter. Um, it's highly recommended to do that because that's the best way to learn the material. Um, I think what we will probably do in this one is uh, what some of the other kind of um, problem heavy books have done where we do one week is the chapter, the next week is the problems from that chapter um, to give us time to really dig into the material because it looks like that's going to be useful here. <laughs> Um, but also, well, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, there's more info about how to build these notes, build the slide decks in the repo. Um, and all of these will be recorded and posted on our YouTube channel. So if you ever miss a week, you can go there. Uh, usually I get them up the next day or the day after that. All right, so um, like I was saying, I think we'll probably take about two weeks per chapter, but I could see it being three or four in, in depending how thick these chapters get. Um, I could also see maybe some of the chapters, we just won't feel like it really is worth two weeks. Um, and we'll play that by ear as we go. Um, I'm gonna try to try really hard to keep us meeting every week, except obviously we're starting right before the holidays and we'll have some breaks in there. And I think we'll probably end up running into the um, daylight savings madness in March right. um, and we'll skip that because uh, that just becomes a big headache for the this um, all the clubs um, that also corresponds that I think it's March uh, 15th and 16th is actually a shiny conference uh, so I think we might overlap with that um, in any case that week we will take off um, well, I guess any comments about the pace after it, um, you may or may not have looked at chapter one. And just agree, basically. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think uh, two weeks per chapter is good. Yeah. I mean, like you said, we can adjust. So, yeah. When I first looked at it, I was like, oh, it's only 10 chapters. This is going to be a quick, uh, quick book club. And then started to look at it. I'm like, oh, no, we, it, you know, definitely, uh, or pro pretty definitely, we'll be doing two weeks per chapter. Um, I have this resources tab and actually I already have some stuff that I want to add to this that uh, the book website is very useful. They've got lecture videos uh, from 2020 oh. and 2022 or <laughs> yeah, 2022. Uh, the 2022 ones are obviously in progress um, and like less complete because they recorded everything in 2020. He um, went through, uh, it's usually multiple lectures per chapter. It looks like. Um, so I was watching some of those and that was helpful. It's uh, the author of the book is the lecturer. Um, they did solutions to some of the exercises where they like walk through uh, the solutions and it says in the book, which ones have videos. So that one's, that's helpful. Um, they do have code in um, MATLAB, Python, Julia, and R. Um, 
from the repo, it looked like there were some things missing in R, but I haven't run into those yet. Um, so uh, yeah, that is very helpful. And then one thing that I wanted to add is I just, uh, I, I um, oh, it was when he was going over the, the fundamental theorem of calculus, I was like, I this is familiar, but this is not you know making sense to me right now. And I, I watched a um, three blue, one brown video on YouTube that was very helpful in saying it in a more clear way. Um, I think that's probably going to be a common research resource because he does a lot of math stuff on that YouTube channel. Um, especially, I think he also does quite a bit of probability. Um, and so we'll probably uh, want to find some other resources to look at for some examples. All right, and that takes us to this math mathematical background chapter. Hi, uh, hi, 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 John. Yep. I, I, yep. I, I just had a, uh, a short comment. Sure. I, like, uh, you know, two weeks, I think uh, two weeks might be uh, good, like you suggested, but um, is it that is it possible that in the second week we like have some walkthrough of the, 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 the practices? I, I was thinking, yeah. you know. Absolutely. Uh, I guess, yeah, to specify or to, to clarify that, yeah. The, what I plan to do, I mean, we'll see how timing goes today, but I, I, I prepared notes for the whole chapter that I plan to present this week. And then next week, we'll just focus on walking through the exercises. Like, so everyone try to do the ex exercises before next week, and then we'll discuss any of them that are confusing or um, surprising or, yeah, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's, that's really one of the ways to learn this material, you know? Yes. The, yeah. And I think by specifically having a week where we're planning to discuss the exercises, like that really encourages us to really do the exercises. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. Like work, work, work on it yeah. and, and, you know. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's the only way to really learn this kind of material is you have to actually do it. Um, I probably won't make notes formally for that, but I don't know yet. We'll see how that goes when we go into the exercises. Um, but yeah, the idea would be like I'll I'll plan to lead next week, but ideally everyone come, you know, prepared and to have questions and all that kind of thing. It's more like, you know, week one is the lecture section and week two is the recitation yeah. section. And to go back to like college classes. Yeah, where, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So absolutely, totally agree. Um, so this week. And, and again, I say lecture, but I, you know, I want this to be a discussion too. <laughs> so, um, but I've prepared notes. Uh, I will, uh, or my goal at least is to put together learning objectives each week about what is the chapter about. And I usually, I'll try to do that early in the week. So if you're presenting, you'll have them, but um, we'll see how that goes. Um, in fact, I'll probably try to do that on Saturdays. Um, so yeah, this week we are uh, reviewing a whole bunch of stuff that I had personally um, more like probably about 25 years ago in college and haven't used a lot of it since, um, or not formally used it since. So uh, that was fun. Um, so we did some, we're gonna do some calculating of sums of geometric sequences and binomial series. Uh, we're going to use Taylor approximation to estimate the value of a function near a point. Um, we're going to calculate integrals of odd and even functions. We're going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus and the chain rule to solve some problems. And we'll use linear algebra to compare vectors using inner products, norms, cosine angles, and weighted norms. Um, and then we'll do some matrix calculus to solve some problems and calculate permutations of items and combinations of items. Um, and without further ado, I'll dive in. So he started with this warm up, and I thought it was kind of interesting that he did the um, like. Here's why this section matters. I liked that he kind of, you know, would dive into that, and he's looking at. Oh, and then I just I did it in uh, in R to to kind of familiar my or really grok it basically. So he, it's just some some data about flipping coins um, and it was uh, you want to get uh, two tails and then a head and it's like how long you know we're looking at um, the probability that you've gotten two tails and then a head and so uh, or, or sorry that the that you have gotten to a head 
out of your flips. Um, and so, uh, you know, it'd be just a head, a tail and then a head, uh, or yeah, or a head within these two, um, a head within these three, et cetera. Um, and then the other, the next piece was saying, okay, okay how, how many flips does it take? Um, you are, here, I'm muting you, Sham. Um, so there was some background noise. Welcome to the call, Sham Sadin. Um, and then uh, just looking at how long does it take to have 90% uh, chance that you will have gotten ahead. Um, and so that's what I'm showing here. Um, and then he, he was trying to like talk about, and I guess he does this more later with the birthday example of, you know, there's a difference between like um, mathematically proving that something will happen or whatnot versus just the probability that it'll happen. And then, oh, we want to be 90% sure that a thing will, ha will have happened or we wanna be 95% certain or whatever, or we wanna have a 95% chance that it has happened. So that was this warm up, And then we get into the math. Um, so a lot of this, like, you know, I, I, may, I wrote it all into the notes. Um, I don't know how much to like really dig into it versus just like it, you know, it is there. Um, We've got sums of, it, of finite geometric series, sums of infinite geometric series, and um, for you know infinite, uh, this only works when r is less than one because the idea is that if this is less than one and you take it to infinity, then it goes to zero, and so your the uh, formula simplifies to just one over one minus r. Um, and so, you know, we can use this to to find sums of series. And again, I think we're going to have some examples of uh, doing that in the exercises. Did anyone have any comments? I just questions? Had one comment about that, and that this is like one of my favorite formulas in uh, in <laughs> math because, first of all, it's easy, relatively easy to derive or to prove, right? And second right. of all, it appears over and over and over again, all kinds of places, like in uh, finance right for interest right. rates um for in music and signal processing and all kind of, it just comes up over and over and over again it's such a nice neat result uh yeah that's that's very true um and i i actually like every time you know i look at the infinite series some like it's that formula is so simple <laughs> and for something that feels like it should be complicated yeah exactly it's like a little miracle curve somehow <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, I, did, anyway, I do that like was that. My comment. Yeah, no, very true. It's a good point. And um, I like that right away he did an example where it looks like it's more complicated and then just showed, yeah, but pull the one quarter out and then it's a yeah. simple um, geometric series. So I think that it was good to like, you know, I haven't had a math class in a very long time. <laughs> so the only math I've done is with kids. And, and so it was good to kind of get into that a little bit. All right. Uh, so next, uh, he goes into binomial series. Um, he introduced or, I don't know, reintroduced n choose k uh, in this section where you'll we're going to see this written probably a lot. Um, and it's given n options and you choose k of them. Uh, this is how many uh, combinations there will be. Um, we we'll talk about that more at the end of the chapter. Um, and yeah, I talked about the R code on the next page, I think. So we'll get into it there. Um, and then the binomial theorem is just if you have a plus b to the n, um, that is, oh, that's got a typo. That should be an equals. Um, that's the sum from k equals zero to n of n choose k times a to the n minus k times b to the k. Um, and then uh, Pascal's identity, he talks about, and he shows some, some visual example of that. That's just n choose k plus n choose k minus one is the same as n plus, or n plus one choose k. So in other words, you know, if you're saying 
uh, I've got four things and I choose two of them. And you can add that to, I've got four things and I only choose one of them. That'd be the same thing as I've got five things and I choose two of them. Um, any, any thoughts about binomial series? All right. If I, I gotta okay. find, there's a video somewhere, maybe it's a red versus blue thing, but there's somewhere there's a really good uh, explanation of that Pascal's identity that makes it totally obvious. I just can't remember where the heck I saw it. I have to find it. Yeah, yeah. I I think I actually might have seen the same one. So um, that that would down. speak to it possibly being either three blue, one brown. Three blue, um, one brown, yeah. Uh, there's Not also, red, right? um, yeah. <laughs> it's a red versus blue, that's a different thing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is a different thing. Uh, <laughs> I don't think they're going to be explaining Pascal's identity. No, no. Um, but uh, also, what is it called? Number file? is another YouTube channel that has a lot of, like that one's just weird math things, but that's why Pascal's identity could come up on that because it's like this weird pattern thing. Yeah. Um, anyway, anyway, if yeah, I find it, I'll we'll, link it. Yeah, we'll have to um, share any videos about, that we see about that. Um, the, the code for this stuff, uh, just I wanted to point out that in R, there's the choose function, which is choose, n k or if you did it with a pipe it would be n pipe choose k which kind of fits the um the way it's normally pronounced and then there's the factorial function so factorial of k um so <laughs> with i should have done factor well whatever factorial of k is what we were doing here but using two as the example for factorial is just about the worst example i think <laughs> <laughs> all right Ah, all right. And then we had the Taylor approximation. So this was, um, you can approximate a function near a value A, and it looks um, fairly complicated. So it's just, the, it comes out to be, it's the sum from n equals zero to infinity. And, and sorry, and this is the exact, you know, exact definition of the function. So f of x is exactly n equals zero to infinity. Um, the nth derivative of uh, of that function or at a divided by n factorial times x minus a to the nth, which you know looks complicated, but the idea is okay, this will come out to exactly the function, but just don't go to infinity and you get an approximation. And um, so you can use it to simplify a function near a value, like near zero would be a common case of uh, what's an, an easier way to calculate this function near zero. Um, what was, but uh, oh, and then the, I guess another important part of that is like um, each uh, each additional term tends to add less than the, or does add less than the term before it. And so um, you can choose uh, your, how high you're going for like, based on how precise you need to be. Um, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next slide. Yeah, we have some, some examples here. Um, he did, the the um, sine of x near zero, just as an example. So, you know, again, writing that out, that's the f of zero, f prime of zero, f double prime of zero over two um, factorial, yada, yada, yada. And so the first derivative is cosine, uh, second derivative is sine, uh, negative sine, third derivative is negative cosine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Let's see, let's see. Yeah, and then um, cosine of zero is one. And so this simplifies down to just x minus x cubed over six, or you can look at it as it's x minus x to the n over n factorial. And you just keep uh, flipping those plus minus plus minus. Um, I think this actually probably is, actually it doesn't matter what that is because that comes out to zero, Never mind. okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, anyway, any, any other thoughts on that? I need to check that I don't have any typos in that because there might be- it looks right to me. Sign, yeah, I can't remember cosine, if there's a sign flip. Yeah. No, there isn't. Sign cos okay. is a cosine without a sign flip, so it's all right. Okay. It looks right to me. Okay, okay. It's the second, it's the sine zero term that goes away, so- you, Right, 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 right. So it does go plus minus like you thought. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay. Anyway, so yeah, and then it goes plus minus plus minus. Right, right. So this one flips back to positive sign. Um, yeah. Oops. Okay. That's yes. Again, it's been a little while. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, and yeah, just uh, it's you know it's a neat way, neat trick to um, find things near uh, or you know to to evaluate things at different places. Um, and it kind of, this is just another example where a lot of the stuff that he's going into this, into in this chapter, it's giving us a hint of, you know, the difference between probability and other math is you're trying to approximate or you're trying to, um, like get close, <laughs> you know, like what is, what is this going to be? Well, I don't know exactly what it'll be, but it'll be, you know, with 95%, uh, or 95% of the time, it'll be this, that kind of thing. So um yeah oh and then uh he goes into exponential series uh is another uh example of this that it's um x to the k over k factorial um and you can use that to um uh like to, for, for various tricks basically <laughs> and so like he shows an example where we've got this um you know a lambda just whatever any number K times e to the negative lambda over k factorial. I'm trying to find the sum of that. Um, since this is a, a just a constant, we can pull that out, and we've got this lambda k over k factorial. And hey, that is this, and so that's just e to the lambda, and e to the negative lambda times e to the lambda is one. Um, I added a step or two into that because when I first looked at his um, walkthrough of that, I was like, wait, what? Oh, okay. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of back off and see what it was. Um, any thoughts there? I don't want to buzz through too fast, but this is another one that it kind of is what it is. Yeah. I don't remember. I'm, I, I probably, I don't know. I don't know if I ever had this concept of an even function function versus an odd function. I don't remember ever learning that. So the, I thought that was interesting. I don't, I don't know. Um, where an even function is basically where it's um, mirrored across the Y axis. And then an odd function is mirrored, you know, flips uh, across the Y and X. Um, and then the idea being that if you're trying to find the integral from negative a to a for an even function, you just take zero to a and double it because it's the same on the left as it is on the right. Technically, I guess if it's easier, you could take negative a to zero and double that. Um, and if it's uh, an odd function, then it'll come up to zero because the left and the right cancel each other out. Um, I mean, again, it's one of those things that does come up a lot. Um, like especially integrating like trigonomet trigonometric functions and whatnot, right? Because sines are yeah. odd and cosines are even. So right. If you integrate those, right. you can like, oh, good, all these sines go away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> True. Um, it, yeah, I guess it's just I I didn't remember the terminology. <laughs> yeah, I'll put it that way. And so it's like, oh yeah, okay, that makes sense. Once you like um, visualize it as the even is you know mirrored across y, so of course once you cross zero, like it's going to be the same thing again. Um, or you can, I guess, technically, like, you know, you could shift that so it doesn't have to cross zero, but it has to cross some point that you know, and you can right. just double that. Um, cool. And that, um, yep. So that was that was that uh, review. And you know, again, presumably that'll be useful in the problems. Um, I was not following what he was trying to say in this in the fundamental theorem of calculus until like really diving into it some more myself and going oh right this is just the that der derivation is the opposite of integration um it's really all it comes down to it's like okay yeah um and then you know he points out that you can use that in conjunction with the chain rule this stuff i i um i didn't do the exercises yet and i feel like okay, why did he bring this up? Will probably become much more obvious with some sample exercises. It's like, okay. Um, yeah, 
so I don't, I don't know. I don't have any other thoughts about that other than, okay, yeah, I remember that <laughs> that's a thing. Writing out the formula definite or formal definition feels a lot more complicated. Like it was harder for me to wrap my head around that than the words. Like, oh yeah, derivation's the opposite. I see that's what you're doing here. Um, anyway, any thoughts on any of that? And again, we'll see how it comes up in the uh, in the exercises. And then we had some linear algebra. Um, <laughs> I, I think I was saying before we started the call, it is very ironic to me that I became a data scientist because in college, linear algebra was the math class that made the least sense to me. Um, and so it's been funny that like now I'm getting there to where it makes more sense and I, I apply things and I use things, but um, it, it, I don't know, it's funny. So I always like, I, you know, I'll have to um, definitely do some work to make sure that I'm keeping up, uh, but some basics that we, or that he goes into is the inner product uh, is the transpose of X dot product Y um, written out in R that is T of X. And then there's the infix operator of uh, that's the dot product Y. Um, the norm, uh, there are multiple norms depending on how you want to norm. So that would be the you know norm of X or the, the uh, magnitude of X. Um, here we're doing a norm of type two, which is that's an L2 norm. Uh, you can see the help for norm for all the other types that are available. Aggravatingly, and this is why um, people make things that aren't base R, that the type, if you do type equals two without the quotes, you'll get a different result than if you say type equals two with the quotes. Um, I thought that was really interesting, like it failed, I think, when I did that. So uh, you just gotta be careful about that. Um, and then the cosine angle is uh, cosine of theta is the inner product over the L2 norm of X times the L2 norm of Y. And so I wrote that out, but that's that's all that is there. Um, and I've got some more or uh, some specific examples. Um, <laughs> I I used, I just wanted to keep everything nice and clean. And so this is like the first time I ever have used the new R 4.0, 4.1, whatever it is, uh, shorthand for functions. So don't be confused. That slash just means function. So I made, I defined these two functions. Inner is function of XY. It's like we just, all right, showed you on that last page. And cosine angle of X and Y is what I showed you on the last page. I just wanted to be able to run them easily. And so I I generated data kind of like what he was showing in the, the book where we've got X1 and X2 are just uh, random numbers uh, from, well, whatever, small random numbers. And then X3 is derived from X1. I, I wanted to just reproduce what he had basically to see it as we go, but the book has it laid out of shows some examples of it. And it looks like all three of them are just random numbers, but really X3 is derived from X1. And if we take the inner product of X1 and X2, that's a small number. Inner product of X1 and X3 is a less small number. Um, and so the reason that the cosine angle like exists as a thing that we care about is it's better if we normalize our two uh, functions so that we can see, okay, are they really related? If we do the cosine angle X1 and X2, it's a you know negative small number. Cosine angle X1 and X3, is almost one. It's like, oh, okay. So those are those are highly correlated. These are not. Um, and again, technically you can see that here, but it's not as obvious um, as it is with the cosine angle. Any other or any thoughts around that? Okay. Uh, weighted norms was just very briefly uh, gone into, but I wanted to make sure that I could sort out how to do it in R. Um, here it's, you know, it's the same as, uh, or it's, sorry, it's, uh, you take the, let's see, so I want to go back that the, uh, this is actually, 
Um, anyway, so the weight, uh, I've got typo, or I feel like I've got a typo here. Yeah, that's supposed to be a dot. I was like, what What the heck is <laughs> X <laughs> is an index? So um, that should be an asterisk. Um, so that's the weight matrix. We, you know, and the example here is we've created a weight matrix, uh, create X. And when we apply that weight matrix to X, it's in your product. That's what we end up with just um, from here. But if we take the uh, transform of X times that uh, weighted X, that's our Z and that's our uh, weighted norm. Does that make sense? Is that following along? All right. Um, Next, he goes into some matrix calculus where we did like inverse and we did some system or a system of linear equations. This is something that, you know, I guess both of these come up a fair amount. So it's good to be able to recognize how to, how to uh, solve these. And, um, you know, again, this is the formal, like the, the mathematical representation of a matrix inverse. Um, but to do that in R, uh, you take, you know, your transpose of X times X, and then there's this function solve that does uh, a lot of this stuff in here. So we can take that, take solve of this transpose of X times X, and that'll give us the uh, matrix inverse. Similarly, um, we've got another, so we're going to stick with X, but add this new uh, vector Y, and we can find solve that system of equations. Uh, by just doing solve this QR of X and uh, with Y. Um, I don't know. That's all my thoughts on that. <laughs> any, any comments, questions on that? This feels, again, like... What does QR um, do? So that is, it's a... I can't remember now. That is... Uh, Nope, that doesn't work. Ah, my windows are all colliding into each other. So I'm trying to remember. Oops. Is the um, it's the QR decomposition of a matrix. So this was when getting into where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna follow along with how this works, but uh, I don't remember enough linear algebra to make sense. Of this, um, so it is a um, it's a step in solving a lot of matrix things. I'm I'm checking through like help and notes, but I I don't have a good I don't oh, okay I don't have a good understanding of this. Just okay. other than this works. Um, and I think probably we'll talk about this more next week <laughs> after like trying to apply it to try to solve some problems. I mean, I remember um, re I remember learning about QR decomposition and that's about it. <laughs> right. So yeah, that is something um, I didn't dive in as much as I should have. Like I, there's gotta be a video out there somewhere that will explain that better. Um, Cause okay. here we kind of glossed over it. I, I got, I got to, um, this is how to write this in our code. Why it works that way, I don't. Have I mean, you a could good... just write all that out, though, too, right? You could just yeah, use yeah. X, TX inverse times X yes. transpose. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. So you could do that. Um, I think it's that the solve is like an efficient way to do right. it. Right. Um, true. Um, and it like this, I don't know, this feels like, like what solve is for it's like you know solve the system of linear equations just i i do have to wrap my head around okay but why do we have to qrx in order to solve it um i'm not certain yet so um, sorry sorry um yeah i'm not um like the, the beta is reminding me of the uh the the the, the ols regression stuff yes yeah yeah something like, like this you know yeah, so it's, you know, the idea behind this would be, you know, we've got this matrix. Um, I should have reprinted the matrix, but it's just, you know, some some random numbers effectively. 
of uh, one negative two zero three seven one. Um, and it's as if you know it, it would be like one uh, you know like uh, one x plus zero equals two uh, negative two x plus three um, or, sorry equals two y uh, equals one y and then equals zero y you know like this is a set uh, they represent a system of equations. We glossed over that and also in the book, but the idea is that, you know, we've got this matrix and this uh, Y one dimensional matrix um, that uh, represent equations. And so we're solving that system of equations here and solving as in uh, generating betas of um, yeah. what are, you know. So um, in, in a sense yeah. that the, the, the QR, sort of uh, solves the, the the components that have the x or uh, something like this yes so there it like yeah it prepares the x matrix like uh, uh, for it to be solved uh, transport uh, in a form where it could easily be solved with uh, with the y yeah i didn't so let me see uh, i don't have it handy but um you know in theory we sh it should be a um like a step on the way, so I copy my code uh, and I do QR of X, what is it? So, um, so again, here, I'll copy this into, um, into the chat, it's a little messy, but, um, so I, I have that matrix as is shown up on the screen. And if we take QR of that matrix, um, it's generating a, um, and actually, so it is, you know, it's generating a matrix and it's got some other properties of that matrix that are ready for solve to use. I don't know. I'm going to have to watch uh, or do some more review to really wrap my head around what's happening here, I think. But it works. Yeah, yeah. It looks, <laughs> Q, again, it looks like QR of X creates the, you know, does the QR decomposition and creates an object that has a Q and R part. Right. So QR makes two matrices, a uh, uh, orthogonal matrix and an upper triangle, upper right triangular matrix, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. But so it's a representation and somehow that with solve can more easily, there's actually a different method that gets called solve.qr. Right. Um, I just read that just now. I don't know anything yeah. else beyond that, but <laughs> just trying to piece it together. <laughs> But yes, yes. Yeah. So, but the um, other way to do this is just to use OLS, like you said, <laughs> just use LM, for example, keep the same answer. Right, right. right. <laughs> That's right. So that is uh, actually, yeah, like um, we would have to, okay. Yeah, and actually that's that's curious because if you look at LM, the, the LM function, uh, the default method of LM is QR. Ah, so, there you go. All fits together. <laughs> and I'm curious if. Oh, that's 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 interesting. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and it's not only the default; like it's uh, it says it like if you use something other than QR, it's going to give an error. So, um, anyway. Those are, yeah, those are strongly related. And this is, again, this is just LM, basically. Um, so it's kind of LM broken down into something closer to the pure math. Um, all right. Uh, and then, like, I felt like we I felt like this kind of went at the beginning because this got back to all the NCHU's K stuff and the simpler, uh, simpler for me to follow. Just it is what it is kind of math. Um, he did permutations and then combinations, but there's a function in R to do the combinations. There isn't a spe specific function to do the permutations. And so uh, I reverse the order. So in a combination, it's just, it's where the order doesn't matter. So, you know, one comma two is the same thing as two comma one. Like we don't care which order that you chose them in, um, which means that combinations are just and choose K. I've got you know, five things and I want to choose two of them, how many different ways can I do that? 
that's that function choose in R. And then there's also the function common uh, in R, which given um, either you can give it a, a number. So if you say 10, it'll say, okay, I've got one through 10. And then I want um, to choose M things out of that and it'll generate a matrix of all the combinations. Or you can give it like a set of things, uh, a, a vector of choices and tell it how many to choose at a time and it'll create the matrix. That's all of those. Um, I can't think of an example, but I have had cases where I've either used this or effectively reproduced it because I didn't realize that it was its own function. I can't remember. Um, <laughs> and so uh, that is useful to have around if you wanna like make, yeah. uh, especially if you're making like sample data, I think, uh, or, or I don't know, I can't think of exact cases, but I know I have done this. Um, so that's so that's the the combination and then for pre permutations uh it's just you take out you don't divide by k factorial um and so therefore you can go backwards and just take choose and k and multiply it by k factorial to get back to the number of permutations um and again permutations it the order does matter um and so that's why there are more of them because here, these are counted as one case, and down here, they would be counted as two cases. Um, he talked about how, like, you know, combinatronics uh, aren't really um, that important in data science, and so we won't really be focusing on this this much. And I don't know, I don't know that they're super important, but I know that I've, like, had to relook up how to do this stuff a few times, if nothing else, then for, like, um, Figuring out possibilities before, like, okay, yeah, my model is doing this, but what what could it have done? You know, that kind of thing where you want to remember or you want to go through and what are the permutations that were possible in this or um, all that kind of stuff. So I think this is useful for kind of uh, having a baseline understanding of what a problem really is, like what could happen here. And then, okay, here's where we work out what does happen. Um, maybe we aren't going to be using the permutation formula, but um, I don't know. I've had it come up for sure um, multiple times where I just go back and, you know, I can never remember these formulas. And I actually didn't know that choose was a built in R function. And so I've like re redone this math a few times and had to remember how to do that. So um, I do think this is really useful to have in the toolkit. Um, and oh, yep, that's it. That's all I've got. So that was the chapter. It's these, um, oh, and so there's another way that we can do this. Okay. So the prod. Slightly, yeah, slightly more efficient because you're not multiplying, dividing by <laughs> something. <laughs> right. This, right. This is just literally, yeah, you know. You know, if you okay. want, you want to choose uh, four items from thirty-six items. You take thirty-six times thirty-five times thirty-four times. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I made, I made a lost count, but you know, just yeah, that's that's all it is. Okay, so that's again, it'll never come up, yeah. so you'll forget it by the time. You <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but I want to, I want to have typed it so that I can remember. Um, let's go to. Uh, oops, not four and then two minus one. Okay, cool. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and, and again, yes, I will have forgotten it. I'll end up redoing yeah. everything as just factorial because I'll forget, um, you know, I'll, I'll just be working from the raw formula, but it is nice to know that those are there and I'll try to, I'll add that into the notes. So, um, uh, let's see, I'm making a quick note to myself to uh, do there to put that into the notes. Um, yeah, so that's that's the chapter. Um, it's a lot of, you know, it is, it's definitely a math review because it's a lot of disparate things just kind of stuck together. And it do, did make me, um, I don't know, interested and anxious to see what's what's left to come because I'm like oh 
it hurt my brain to go through the review chapter. What's it going to do to go through the new material? We'll see. <laughs> Any other comments, questions, thoughts? One comment I had is that I think it's interesting. In the very first paragraph, he says the school thing. He says this is an important topic because if there's no randomness. All data science can close their business because there's no problem to solve. So I think <laughs> that does highlight the importance of this topic, at least. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like uh, models would be pretty easy if uh, yeah. there's no randomness. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I did. I liked that too. Um, oh, and something, I don't know, interesting from the lecture videos that he has is he mentions Ooh. in the first lecture uh, for this course that it is known as uh, within the, what is it called? It's like the computer science department um, at Purdue. Uh, and I don't remember exactly what the department is called, but it's computer science department at Purdue. This course is known as the hardest course at, wow. in that whole department. So like that was a little bit you know, intimidating. And I, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't have brought that up, but uh, my goal of this, you know, like I said in the channel, of if I were taking this right now, I, I wouldn't care about getting an A in this course. I just want to absorb it. I want to get, I, I want to be able to look these things up. And so that's, that's where I'm trying to get. Um, I, I am not personally going to uh, focus on making sure I understand every line of every proof, you know, maybe I will, but that's not, that's not my personal goal here. I just want to uh, get a good feel for this stuff uh, and to talk out things to go, Hey, there's a uh, slightly more efficient way to do that. And so let's, you know, remember that that exists, things like that. Um, yeah. I think, you know, it's like a little bit of mental weightlifting, maybe like you're going to be like pushing yourself a little bit. And then <laughs> when you get done, you're not going to be like the master of probability, but you'll be like, a, you'll be better than you. Like, you know, when you lift up a like hundred pound exactly. weight a lot, you'll get stronger. <laughs> and then when you have to lift up that 20 pound weight, it's much easier, right? <laughs> exactly. Yes. That, that's exactly it. Like, and so being able to um, not be intimidated when yeah. I've got some probability problem to solve or, or want to think through something probabilistically. So we'll see how it goes. All yeah, right. my hope and, is this first chapter is intense, you know, is a little bit more challenging only because it's like, oh, we're have to switch gears and it's mathematical exactly. point of view. And then also at the same time, he's trying to quickly shove a bunch of ideas he wants to get you up to speed on so then he can, you know, go on further. But I haven't yeah. actually read chapter two yet. So that's the one <laughs> yeah, I'm me neither. And I hope it's not too bad. <laughs> so. Okay. And I couldn't remember. I hadn't looked at the schedule <laughs> to see. Um, Actually, I do want to pull that up because oh, let's uh, get this. That uh, so in the channel, if you haven't seen, oops, that's not where I meant to go. There's that. There is a link to volunteer to present, and yeah, I'm so I'll take the you know I own that one, and Ron, you will own right. leading the problems. Um, I actually so for that just to walk through that on the twenty first. I will be on the road. Um, I don't know yet whether I will uh, participate, but just FYI. Okay. Um, if we decide, well, I don't know. I don't think we should skip because I think it's better to keep the problems and problem sets and chapters as close together as we can. Um, yeah, anyway, so that's th this sheet exists. I'm glad you already signed up, Ron, and I will be bugging people to sign up for future uh, chapters after the break. We'll see how these first two go and whether that um, changes anyone's thoughts about things. Um, oops. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'll, I'll see how it goes. I might also want to um, volunteer for some other chapters, but let's see how it goes. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, so I'll see everyone next week and in the channel. I think we have some things that we want to like try to find some videos or discussions of. Um, and you know, always feel free to discuss in the in the Slack. If somebody else would want to take on chapter two, just maybe uh, to maybe slightly less onerous, uh, yeah, than future chapters. Let me know. I'll, I'll gladly step aside, but um, <laughs> yeah, and do a later chapter instead or the next chapter three so let me know and you know 
if not, oh I, I i mean i guess i did mention that but i do plan to like have read every chapter if anyone ever has to back out my plan is to just kind of talk about the chapter we will still have a meeting okay. even if someone like at the last minute backs out because if you lose the momentum these clubs can die and i don't want that to happen so we will meet other than planned breaks we're, i plan for us to meet every week even if someone has to miss Okay. Um, cool. All right. Yeah. Well, then yeah. I will cool. see everyone uh, next week. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye.